Good evening, everyone. My name is uh, Ramon Zakaria, and uh, I'm the CEO of Pulses. Uh, Pulses AI. Uh, I would like to thank you for your time today, and thank you, uh, thanks to Erika for organizing uh, such a great webinar. Let's start with one question. So, how many uh, of you have you checked the website and you got this uh, cookie pop up request like uh, allow cookies and so forth? This is one of the many ways that the online sites is trying to analyze you and potentially turning you to a customer. But what actually, how much information do they really know about you? So, of course, you know, like for instance, Facebook collects a lot of information, but did you know they actually collect more than 70% of your personal information? Uber, Uber just, you know, the ride sharing, they also collects at least 53% and Amazon collects about a quarter of your information. And this is how they know, um, how they reach you with a better targeting, their relative ads and so forth, everything like this. The online world in general, they know 10 times more information about their visitors than the physical sites. And this is a gap that we actually trying to reach, uh, trying to fix. So this huge gap, there is, uh, you have a lack of uh, quality of data and the low depth of data. And how we can do it uh, is using pulses. So pulses is a micro camera that sees all of your visitors. It's, um, it's a plug and play. With the, you don't need to have a complicated implementations. You don't need to have any larger upfront investment to measure your customers. It's just a pay as you go and a plug and play cameras. So in order to see what's happening right now, so the traditional in-store analytics, they use three kinds of technologies. So they use sensors and they use Wi-Fi and they use something called iBeacons. And these are three companies um, that they use as these technologies. So they get some attributes like uh, the age, timestamp of the visits, things like this. While with AI, you can get a lot more information. So we have a couple of competitions and uh, you can see we can get uh, uh, a lot of information such as uh, user unique customer ID, age, visit timestamp, gender, returning visitors, uh, satisfaction, dwell time, and mask as well. And we start with $99, while uh, the cheapest competitor to us starts from $250 to give you the same information. Now, we currently have two packages, so the basic and advanced, that provides everything, including newer models. Even if we have a new camera, you can, we can replace it right away for all of our customers. Uh, we provide a complete managed service, and we start from $99 to $129 a month. And this is how it works. So with Pulse's camera, it has uh, a deep learning on it. This is one of our biggest advantages that you uh, don't need to have any servers. You don't need to send any stream, any photos, any videos. You will understand the customers directly on the camera itself. And it's very secure because it does not send anything. It uses a unique identification methodology that it depends on the customer face. So we don't need to, we don't depend on the MAC address of the phone or the tablet or the PC or laptop, whatever, anything with the customer. We just use their faces and anonymously identify them by assigning them a numeric ID. And this is numeric ID is the only information that we have about this customer. And that's why we're also compliant with GDPR and other government regulation because we do not save any personal information uh, for anyone. Uh, we're very scalable because we use uh, the camera, everything has it has on it. So you don't have to have a servers on the back end, no upfront investment, no network cabling, nothing, just plug and play. And you can start having all the analytics right away. And we use the open API so we can integrate with the other systems of the customer if we need to. So we put the camera in the store or our physical location, service center, gym, whatever. Uh, the camera once it detects a face, it sees the face ID, the numeric number, the age, the gender, the mask, the visit time, satisfaction, and so forth. We get all of the information. It sends the data to our uh, in-country data center, and it gives the the um, our uh, customers like a lot of uh, dashboards and reports and performance indices about the performance of their locations in general, whether it conversion rate, safety index. The unique count, the demographics, uh, which area the in in a store or a, uh, a service center they stay in, and so forth. 
So what we start uh, with the, we started in 2018. We start revenue generating right away with Smart Dubai. Smart Dubai was, is uh, the biggest uh, government agency in, the, in Dubai uh, with Jitex. And then we won the first uh, public tender in the UAE for the smart cameras and the RTA. RTA, one of our biggest customers, and now we're working together. And also as well uh, with Dubai Economy. This was our second customer. We started expanding uh, into multiple use cases, multiple government uh, and public sector organizations in UAE and Bahrain and Oman. And uh, in 2020, with COVID hit, we were able to um, we were able to win uh, achieve a key milestone, winning a significant contract with Dubai Police, as long as expanding uh, and, and as well expanding uh, developments with uh, our uh, partner RTA. In 2021, uh, we're starting to pivot to a private sector. So uh, we signed an agreement with Here uh, Technologies. Here Technologies is uh, they provide location services for almost 90% of the global auto industry. And it's owned by companies like Mercedes, Audi, and BMW. They bought it from the Kia before. Uh, and we started, uh, uh, we're also in the final phase of closing a deal with Adidas Emerging Markets to add pulses to more than 700 stores in 77 countries, as well as BMW AGMC. Uh, where uh, to uh, to have the showrooms and service centers covered by Pulse's camera. Uh, they're the leading agency for BMW and Rolls Royce. And last but not least, we're proud to announce that we have won the uh, public tender was at the slot, competing against 15 of the biggest names in the industry, including NEC, Huawei, and, and others. Um, this will uh, be able to uh, get us. Uh, into we're starting to cover 10 stores uh, and then we're going to expand to the 150 stores that they have as well. Uh, we're also happy to uh, announce that we have reached a milestone of 6 million faces analyzed and this we were planning to have this by the end of uh, 2021. So we're around six months early, uh, which is a great thing that shows that people are starting to go into the stores again, locations and uh, COVID is hopefully in this last phase is here. Uh, next year, we're planning to have a wider uh, GCC market. Uh, we're going to plan to enter uh, Case A, uh, Kuwait, and Oman. And uh, we're launching also the Camera Pro, which is a new version of the camera with three sensors and more, uh, more analytics and more sensors and, and built in. So why we invest in Pulses? Uh, we have a very unique offering. It's not, it has very minimal competition. It has a way high margin. And it's a plug and play camera. You have almost minimum cost allows us to expand where uh, we have multiple apps and uh, we have uh, like uh, every now and then we're adding new apps and new intelligence to the cameras, make them smarter. So it gives the partner, the customers a lot of uh, value, continuous value, which allow them, uh, we allow us to keep a higher retention rates. We have a thousand percent revenue growth rate. So we started from $10,000 in the end of 2018, going to 400K by the end of 2021. And we're expecting more than a million dollars next year. Uh, out of these, we have a 90% GP. So uh, our gross profit is high, which allowed us to grow very fast uh, across uh, multiple regions. And we're having at least $100,000 uh, as a lifetime value for uh, our customers. Usually $100,000 is the range of uh, a, single, uh, a single customer purchase right now. We're having uh, two areas of uh, how, what are our exit strategy. We're focused uh, to be acquired by regional key hospitality and retailer, such as MR, Fotame, or a global retailer such as, such as Amazon. As if, I don't know if you know, but Amazon uh, already started moving to the physical convenience stores that are cashless. So this shows, uh, this further highlights the, the need for in-store analytics because this is exactly what's happening right now. This is exactly what Amazon is using. Uh, for a similar company that they got acquired, Chopper Track, they got acquired by Tyco for $175 million. Uh, Euclid, they got acquired by WeWork for $43 million. And Retail Next they got acquired by a private equity for $184 million. Um, and last but not least, we had Effectiva. 
Afectiva is a company. Sorry, Mon, we're going over time. So just if that's, you want uh, okay. to. That's the last, the last thing. Uh, Afectiva got acquired in May, end of May, for $73 million as well in the US. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, Mon. Um, I think we have one question, a few questions, which I'll choose from here. So one of them relates to you know, privacy, because you are actually you know, getting that information about customers or people. So to what extent is, I mean, you know, customers have their consent to have, you know, their, their, to have that data being collected. So how do you mitigate that? That's, um, that's the question that we get asked all the time. So what we use, one of our uh, uh, very unique features that we identify the customers by using uh, facial points, landmarks on their faces, and it generates a single unique number, a long number. This long number is unique for everyone. So it does not have, so my number is whatever, one, two, three, four, two, ten. So one, two, three, four is, does not mean my name, does not mean what I look like, does not mean anything. So this is always like this. We keep only personal, uh, no personal information. In such cases, like for example, uh, the customers that we're working with, uh, linking with CRM, uh, they, the customer itself, the user, the visitor elects to give them the information. If they consent to link their face to their personal profile, then that's okay. If they do not consent, then they don't get access to that. One more thing, when we show any analytics, it's always um, aggregated and not, um, and not a single user journey or anything like this. So it'll give you more of a trend than anything else. Okay, great. Um, I mean, it's interesting to see that now you're moving into the retail and hospitality sector. Uh, I guess, I mean, another recurring question, uh, been, uh, the question right now um, is relating to how that would help you to diversify into, you know, the private sector versus initially you were mostly focused on customers within the government sector and sometimes the revenue generation from there can be slow or payments can be slow. So how did you tackle that? I guess you guys are now moving into retail, if I'm not mistaken. And uh, congratulations on winning the contract with Etisalat as well, which was a great milestone for you guys. You, were, I understand that you were competing amongst um, international players such as Huawei. And so is this also a way of mitigating that? And how would you comment? Yeah, so uh, government, uh, we were lucky to start actually with the public sector because it's highly regulated. We have a lot of uh, regulations, uh, uh, security checks, a lot of things like this, which made us test and optimize our security and privacy part, which was, this is the core of what we're doing. Uh, yes, the government is uh, takes longer, but it's also bigger contracts, longer time. So we have customers for more than three years now. They repeat, they're enduring with us every year. Um, we're trying to balance this with the retail as well. So the retail is much faster. They use information in a different uh, in a different way. They have uh, like a clear ROI for analytics to optimize their sales and marketing. So the the deals are moving. Uh, we're balancing the the portfolio that we're having to be able to sure. scale and move. Thanks. One final question relates to you know, retail analytics or in-store analytics, how do you see the fact that e-commerce is also picking up? Do you think that, you know, uh, what's your views on that? Because some people think that the days are over for e-commerce, people are going online. So what's your views in regards to this? Okay, so there is, there's a lot of, uh, there are a lot of uh, studies, but one of the most famous is in the Statista. Uh, so Statista.com, they issued the study last year that 15% of the whole retail information is uh, the retail purchases, sorry, or transactions, they, they happen online. So all the size and traffic and valuation of Amazon, for example, is only 15%, Amazon and everyone else. Still 85% is not is still in store. And of course, you don't see that because you cannot measure it. This is one of the, even the, the things that that's why they need it. One more thing is I was, uh, I was mentioning, uh, Amazon is uh, planning to really, uh, to, um, May, uh, build 600 stores, convenience stores, brick and mortar. So they are moving from online to offline as well because they know that they still they only have 15%. They want to reach the other 85. So they're making those convenience stores with low price items that's you know less risk. 
and they make 600 of them across the US. They started also in London, they're in other places as well. And you can check it, it's called Amazon Go, yes. Amazon Geo. Yeah. I believe, yeah, I believe they are uh, cashless, uh, cashierless Cash- stores, yes, so, yes. which means there's a bigger need for AI and in store AI analytics, which is this is where full you can of sensors. Yes, play full of role. sensors and cameras. Yeah. That's what yeah. we do. Yeah. So, Great. yeah. Mm-hmm. Great, thanks a lot for joining us and congratulations on the significant award with the Tisalat and um, hopefully more to come.